Welcome everyone back to Boston, Massachusetts. And as always, I must start off with a hearty thank you to Dean Morgan for allowing us to broadcast to you the best wrestling content on planet Earth today. We are starting off determining some challengers for the Mountain Men. Six men representing six tag teams here in Tuesday Night Titans are competing. Out first representing the Hung Studs. It is Jack Pegasus. Pegasus and his tag team partner Aldo Shaw looking to be the next challengers for Mountain Mike and Mountain Sam. but he is going to have to survive against five incredibly talented competitors. He makes his way out first, looking ready for action. Out next, representing Southern Grit, is Elliot Barnes. Him and his tag team partner, Josh Houghton, have been looking for tag team gold for a long time. And this match could be their hot shot straight to the top. Elliot Barnes has been considered by some to be the weak link of Southern Grit, so he is going to look to change that perception here tonight. The big man representing the South. He can lock in the double underhook needed for the Barn Burner Brain Buster. It could be an elimination for him and one step closer to those TNT Tag Team Championships. Out next, we've got a debutante. Yo, listen, it's Max Caster making his way down the aisle. Caster looking to secure a championship opportunity for himself and Anthony Bowens. I can think of no better way to go about doing it than by grabbing the bull by the horns. Max Caster definitely going to have to give it his all here tonight in his TNT debut. This main event Max is in the ring. It is now time for what many people are considering to be Dean Morgan's personal choice. Keith Lee, the most hated man in Boston, Massachusetts for a time, Keith Lee, the hand-selected face of m and Him and his tag team partner, Joey Blake, are going to look to take the world by storm. A former TNT World's Champion who shocked the world 
by defeating the undefeatable Eric Gertz. We've got four of our competitors out here. Only two more to go. And two heavy hitters at that. Keith basking in his own glory. And here is Zach. Primus representing the Primus Brothers. Of course, Matt Primus had a short but eventful time on TNT, but Zach now makes his way to Boston looking to secure a championship matchup. Zach Primus definitely has. The technical ability, but the experience, especially here in TNT, is lacking. And in a place like this, it really is step up or step aside, put up or shut up, or in just two weeks, make or break. Zach Prime is going to have to do just that. And now the final entrant, Matthew Millers, his brother and him last week defeating the Murder City Machine Guns in an all-time classic TNT Tag Team match, clinching him the sixth and final spot in this match. Matthew Miller's definitely looking to make a splash here in TNT. Will his future be as bright as his jacket? That remains to be seen. But he is the sixth and final entrant in this tag team six pack matchup. There will be five eliminations and the last man standing will represent their team. Make or break. So let's see who can get it done. This one's going to be chaotic. Big barn burner onto Zach Primus immediately. Nearly got the win. A lot of action here. Elliot Barnes has paired off with Zach Primus. Matthew Miller's taking on the biggest dog, Keith Lee. And Max Caster locking horns with Jack Pegasus. Keith Lee shoots Matthew Miller to the outside. Elliot does the same to Zach Primus. Big vertical suplex by the fundamental fire starter. Jack Pegasus and shake, rattle, and roll from Pegasus there. Keith Lee, the master of the power bomb, sends Matthew Millers to the floor. And now Max Caster back up. Elliot Barnes is taking Zach Primus to task. Keith back in on Matthew Millers. Millers spins him around though. Destine, no from Matthew Millers. And nearly gets the elimination on Keith Lee. 
Big gut buster there by Jack Pegasus in the ring. As Primus and Barnes continue to do battle on the floor. Look at this. Going for a powerbomb on Caster, but Caster gets the counter. Big stroke on the floor by Zach Primus. Twisting senton there by Matthew Millers, who sets his sights on Max Caster. Zach Primus with a chin lock applied onto Elliot Barnes with the quick escape as well. Caster with the kick, but Millers manages to stay up. Of course, this is falls count anywhere as well. Something that has become somewhat of a staple here in TNT is the cluster match. And Max in the corner and just getting squashed by the Limitless Lee. And a second time for Caster to get squashed in the corner and Miller sending him astray. Grabbing Keith Lee and laying in the shots. Big back suplex onto Jack Pegasus. And that nearly gets it done. A famer from Matthew Millers could be looking to put him away here. Max could be looking for the mic drop. Connects flush on Jack Pegasus with the mic drop. And could that be Jack out of there? No, he kicks out. Keith Lee caught with the tornillo by Matthew Millers. And Keith Lee survives. No eliminations thus far. Big Tiger suplex and a King's Landing by Lee. Northern Lights and Zach Primus landing hard on the outside. As Millers is sent out after him. Spine on the pine courtesy of Jack Pegasus. Goes for the cover but only gains two. Keep your eyes on Pegasus. Big slam by Barnes there over the moon, but he nearly missed as Matthew Millers tried to get involved. Shake, rattle, and roll from Jack Pegasus. And Zach Primus becomes the first to fall, but Jack Pegasus has had at least a six count on Matthew Millers, saved by circumstance. Locking in a variation on a figure four here on Caster. And now Jack Pegasus jumping off the ropes. Back elbow to the back of the head of Elliot Barnes as the back of Keith Lee continues to get assaulted by all manner of attacks. There are now five in the match. Zach Primus was the first to go. Look at the raw strength of Keith Lee. Elliot Barnes, at least 270 pounds, thrown around like nothing, picks him up. BBC on to Elliot Barnes. And is that going to be enough to put him away? Barnes survives. Matthew Miller's countered by Jack Pegasus, but back into it. Back and forth they go. Big twisting DVD by... Matthew Millers and Jack nearly out. Oh no, keep your eyes on Lee. Countered at the last possible second. It looks like he was going for the pounce, but Elliot got saved. Big scorpion death drop there by Matthew Millers. Russian leg sweep by Jack Pegasus. Elliot looking to powder to the floor. Four men in the ring. Look at the kicks on display by Matthew Millers. Back elbow by Pegasus. Miller's up on the top. Spine on the pine. Torneo, but nobody home. Referee James Jackson out of position. And Keith saved by the momentary lapse. Springboard gum and Geary by Matthew Miller's. And Caster rolls out of the way. And a shake, rattle, and roll from Jack Pegasus. But Matthew Miller's looking to steal it here. And Keith Lee out of there. And then there were four. Miller shot off the ropes. Manages to get himself under himself and back over. 
Big forearm shot for Matthew Miller. Steps in, but nobody home. Pegasus and Barnes doing battle now. Big DDT to Barnes. But Miller's right there. Pegasus not prepared. Pescado head scissors as Max Caster has been on the outside for a long time. He's going to need to get back into this one. And Millers and Pegasus continue to do battle. Max finally back to his feet. Going to look to get back in the ring. He sets his sights on Matthew Millers. But Millers manages to get back to his feet. Pegasus countering Elliot Barnes. A big leg attack and Caster sent back to the floor. Miller's not going to let him get away this time. Pegasus up to the top. Big fist drop, but nobody home. And a headbutt to the pretty boy. And keep your eyes on Barnes. Barn burner! Yoshi Tonic on the floor as well. Pegasus is out of there. A heavy hitter for sure. James Jackson. I don't think he sees the cover on the floor. He just noticed it. And Caster was saved by the hesitation. Elliot busting open Caster. And Matthew Miller's grabbing Barnes and taking him down with the sleeper slam. Twisting Senton as well. Hits a twisting moonsault to follow it up. Goes for the cover. Barnes survives that one. Look at this. Throwing Barnes nearly through Millers and Caster back in as well. Millers back in. Caster getting to his feet. And now grabbing the hand. Could be looking for a Cazadora, but Caster managed to break the grip and just lays in. Went for a drop kick, but nobody home. Oh, and the twisting back elbow and the big boot to Elliot Barnes. Good Lord, what a sequence from Max Caster. Getting a little bit of payback in the form of blood on Elliot Barnes to put him away. And then there were two. Which one of these men's respective teams will go on to face the mountain man? That big Yakuza kick from Max Caster. One, two... Millers survives. Picking him up. Has him hooked and Millers manages to push him away. Caster hit the barrier. And the fall away slam by Millers out of nowhere. Moonsault and battery. And Caster survives the blood. Making it hard for him to see out of his right eye. He is a one-eyed man at the moment. And that may be all it takes Destino from Millers. And that's going to do it. That's going to seal it for Matthew Millers. The Melbourne Switchblades will meet the Mountain Men in two weeks' time at Make or Break. Fantastic performance. And as we get into our next contest to determine who will be facing or who will be in the finale rather for the national championship series. Of course at make or break it will be a fatal four way. So we have a one night tournament to determine the entrance in said fatal four way. Out first, we got a man very familiar with being national champion in Marco Rodriguez, the Magician. And he is going to be taking on Michael Young, the Lord of the Lariat. This one is going to be a proper clash of styles. Marco Rodriguez certainly not having any fans here in Boston, Mass. A 
doubt that will deter the magic man though. He tells them to talk their talk. It's only a motivator for Marco. The next time I have to come in here, I'm cracking skulls. And then there's Michael Young. The Lord of the Lariat, the man who has nothing to do in life except for throw lariats and drink long necks. Unfortunately for anyone in the ring with him, they don't allow drinking on the job. So he is about to try and make his way to that finale. Michael Young winning championships everywhere he's ever been. Looking to make that the same here in TNT. He can make it out of the first round. And Mikey starting off hot and heavy on Marco Rodriguez. Went for the big boy senton, but Marco got the knees up. Cazadora into a double stomp, and they are not pulling anything so far. Big whip down there by Marco Rodriguez, and the Lion Salt connects flush. Marco going to the top already, looking for something big. A more proper moonsault off the top. The high flying has almost led him to an incredibly quick victory over Michael Young. Drops the knee on the back of the head. And slams the head down as well. Lion Salt once again. Marco Rodriguez trying to stay on him. Look at that incredible evasion. He is doing exactly what he needs to do against Michael Young. And that is keep the man grounded. But you just see with one elbow, he sends Marco halfway across the ring. Tiger driver from Michael Young. And he is done playing around. Look at that. Power bomb, straight deadlift on Marco Piscato. Stun dog from Marco Rodriguez. Up to the top rope, eyes on the magic man. Spiral tap from three quarters of the way across the ring. And he gets a mostly uncontested victory on Michael Young. That is a huge statement from Marco Rodriguez. He finds his way in the fatal four-way. As we get into our next contest, it is time to determine who will meet Marco Rodriguez in the fatal four-way at make or break. Out first is the Diamond Daddy, Nikki Diamond. He is a TNT original, of course, was involved in a matchup for the short-lived TNT Television Championship in the first match of the first episode of the original TNT. We last saw him on the first episode of the reboot episode of TNT, where he nearly found himself in that championship match that was ultimately won by... Alex Clark. 
So Nicky Diamond knows his way around the TNT ring like few others. And then there is the case of the narcissist, Ted Cannon. Another man very familiar with the national championship in a previous life. Will he be able to find his way back to that championship? After what I would consider many to have a busted bracket with Michael Young losing in especially quick fashion to Marco Rodriguez in our last contest. Anything is possible. Two heavy hitters in this matchup. Either one of them could make a case for being the next champion. You know, Ted Cannon has had some unflattering things to say about Dean Morgan in the past, though I wonder if that will negatively affect him any, as we know Dean Morgan to be a bit spiteful. So a difference of 94 pounds and seven inches separates these two competitors, completely different weight classes, fighting styles, but both very scrappy and ready for action. Big drop on the head by Nikki. went for the big elbow, but nobody home. Ted may look to pounce in on that leg of Nikki Diamond. Opts instead to focus on the arm. Nikki powering back up and a big rising hand chop is countered and more kicks from Ted Cannon. Sends Nikki up and over. And Nikki Diamond dragon screwing Ted Cannon on the floor. Again, we already know one competitor in this match. Butterfly suplex attempt. Ted Cannon caught his feet on the apron to allow him to float through with that arm drag. Fantastic counter there by the Narcissist. One of the smartest competitors in the game today. Only one of these men can go on to that fatal four-way at make or break against Marco Rodriguez and two yet-to-be-determined competitors. Nikki picking up Ted Cannon and slamming him right on the ropes. Went for the big elbow once again, but nobody home. Ted has definitely had that move scouted. Big DDT to the Diamond Daddy. Nikki in a bad spot at the moment. Big twisting. Mood swing from Ted Cannon. Goes for the cover on Nikki Diamond who powers out emphatically at one. And very wisely putting his hand on the ropes just to make sure that he can stabilize himself. Get a feel for where he is in the ring. And that may have helped him prepare to counter that running lariat by Ted Cannon. Looking for the butterfly suplex once again countered by Ted Cannon who has had an answer for just about every bit of offense that Nikki has attempted. And the Dragon Sleeper is applied on Nikki Diamond now. The Diamond laying in those knees to the dome piece of Ted. Went for the chop, but nobody home. Snapmare from Cannon. Off the ropes with the Yakuza kick to the face. Nikki pulling Ted in with that kick and now just stomping on the arm as well. And the big sit from the Diamond Daddy. And the knee drop as well. A kick in the head and this scrappy match has continued in kind as Ted Cannon shoots Nikki to the corner and pulls him in for the short arm lariat. Could be looking to put it away there. Gets a two but not the three on Nikki Diamond. And now Ted could be looking to put him away completely. Backslide. Driver to Nikki D. And could that do it? No. Diamond pops the hips to get the kick out. Sent Cannon flying. 
The cannon wisely going to stay on him. Nicky back up and tries to take him down. Catches the leg of Ted Cannon. Big chop finally connects from Nicky Diamond. Cannon once again with the counter. Has been playing so scrappy, so defensively. But it has played to his benefit for the entire contest. And spins him out. Looking for something again here. And inverted suplex onto Nikki Diamond. Now just taking down the Diamond Daddy with that assault to the arm. Nikki D back to his feet. Big chop to Ted. And the half and half suplex nearly snapping his neck. And Nikki could be looking for the Diamond Bomb. Nails it. Goes in for the cover, but Ted kicks out of the diamond bomb. Adopted from Mike Awesome, that devastating running crucifix power bomb. Nikki sends Ted to the apron. Oh, and this shouldn't be fun. Laying in the shots to the pectoral region of Ted Cannon, laying it in. Pulling no punches and Cannon falling face first. The ringside area, the fans firmly in the camp of Nikki Diamond. But Ted manages to get the counter. Nikki pulls it back. Nikki Diamond could be looking for something devastating here. A suplex, nay, a jackhammer on the floor. Ted back up. Nikki got the guard up. Nikki grabbing Ted right in front of the TNT faithful. But the chop block to the back of the leg. No, not able to get any offense in. And just tossing Ted, who's back, nailed against the barrier at ringside. Look at the power by Ted Cannon for that sidewalk slam, though. Ted Cannon definitely playing a smart game as Nikki is dazed and confused on the outside and Ted not satisfied with letting him get some breathing room but that may be his undoing. Ted's got to get him back in the ring to put him away. Nikki Diamond only benefits from the time on the outside but Ted proving that he can play that game too with that vicious slam on the barrier at ringside. And locking in that Dragon Sleeper once again on the floor. Nikki's got nowhere to go, but it cannot end out here. Ted even let him go and boot scraping the Diamond Daddy. Nikki back up, grabs Ted. German suplex folding him on the barrier. Good Lord. Picks up Ted Cannon. Oh no. Lawn darting him into the turnbuckle post. But Ted manages to push him away. This one has gotten aggressive in a hurry. Nikki back on the barrier at ringside and Ted slams his head into it. Nikki Diamond with a twisting Uranagi to Ted Cannon. And now Nikki grabbing Ted. Once again, this jackhammer on the floor from Diamond. Throwing Ted to the other side and Nikki getting back in the ring. Telling the fans to point and laugh at the narcissist. But Ted's back up and Nikki is too. Ted Cannon with a waist lock takeover. Nikki's hand hit the apron. Could have sustained an injury there to the arm that Ted has been working over all match. Big vertical suplex as well. Got to get back in the ring though. That is paramount at the moment. And Ted finally sending Nikki back in and going to meet him in there. Ted has Nikki in his sights. 
Lariat from, from Ted Cannon to Nikki, and a second one ducks it. Super kick by Ted Cannon and goes for the cover. Is that going to do it? And no, Nikki survives the super kick and manages to pop a shoulder up. But Ted tries to spin him around. Nikki not going to allow that. Nails him with that forearm smash. Ted Cannon in a bad spot as that gourd buster lays him to rest. Nikki has him up. Could be looking for the diamond bomb one more time. Oh no. Almost tossed him out of the ring, but managed to control him. And Nikki could be looking to move on, but Ted Cannon says no. Not quite yet. Nikki staying aggressive, but you can tell that the wear and tear is getting to him, just clubbing him in the back. Oh, for a third time, this would have to do it. The diamond bomb into the corner. That has got to do it, and it does. Nikki Diamond earns the second spot in the National Championship Series Fatal 4-Way. Had to damn near kill Ted Cannon, but Nikki D gets it done. And as we already know, two competitors in the TNT National Championship Series Fatal 4-Way. It's time to determine number three of four who will meet Marco Rodriguez and Nikki Diamond. Could it be this man, Zach Anderson? Who fresh out of Risen could be looking to enter into a possibility to be the national champion. Dean Morgan saying that this man is exactly what TNT needs. Aggression and devastation. Practically hired him sight unseen, as we have heard. But will it have been a worthwhile acquisition? We'll have to determine that if he can survive against Aaron Wesley. with a lot to prove. And this one is certainly going to be a battle of devastation. I already know two of the competitors in the Fatal 4-Way. One of these men will earn the third of four spots. But it remains to be seen who the final entrant will be. Aaron Wesley definitely not one to be overlooked. This man is absolutely devastating in the ring. Just laying in the punches onto Aaron Wesley is Zach Anderson to start this one off. Big Juji Katami as well, and Anderson sent off the ropes. Juji Katoki, excuse me. And now Aaron Wesley, big pop up, but he caught him into a German suplex. 
incredible body control in a big boy senton as well. Went for a second and Anderson got the knees up. You see that brace around the leg. Definitely a more unfortunate landing position for Aaron Wesley. And after an attack like that, he may need a matching one to Anderson. Big knee lifts here from Aaron Wesley, but Zach pulls him in. Kame Goye from Zach Anderson looking for a second one. And nails it on Aaron Wesley. And a springboard moonsault by Anderson as well. Zach Anderson attacking Wesley's arm here with the stomps. Before pulling him in for another Kame Goye and goes for the cover. And a kick out by Wesley at two. Zach playing a defensive game here. Could play to his benefit as he hits that ripcord knee. But Wesley pushes him to the side. And a big chop as well. Lifts him up and drops Anderson on the top rope. Anderson in the corner could be looking for something big here. He is stanced up for the spin. Here, but Anderson using that braced knee to nail Aaron Wesley clean in the side of the head. Wesley not even staggered by it and laying in the back elbows to Zach Anderson who collapses under his own body weight. That is how devastating Aaron Wesley is. Takes a knee to the side of the head and his immediate reaction is to give you five elbows and a big boy sent on two in a row from Wesley, goes for a third, but Anderson gets the knees up, managing to survive an incredible amount of offense. Big shotgun kick was evaded by Wesley. Oh my, Alabama slamma from Aaron Wesley. But a kick out at one by Anderson. And big midnight from Zach Anderson out of nowhere. But Wesley not even staggered by it. What does it take to put this guy down? Zach Anderson just hit Aaron Wesley with his dime move. And Wesley not even staggered enough for Anderson to even attempt a pin. Big knee drop by Aaron Wesley there. Back to his feet, grabs him and has the mandible claw applied onto Aaron Wesley. But Wesley punching Anderson in the face, even that not quite enough to stagger him. Big Beal toss. And this one is absolutely devastating on both ends. Anderson grabbing Wesley with the flatliner and Wesley is busted open. Looks like right around the brow line. But he goes back into the corner. The blood, a tremendous motivator. The spear is once again countered by Anderson. Midnight to Wesley. But the kick and he's back to his feet. Takes him down with a lariat. My God. The devastation on display from both parties. Anderson has not been able to keep Wesley down for a significant amount of time. Wesley is just fighting with everything he's got to put Anderson down. Pop up once again into that German suplex. The blood spreading across the face of Aaron Wesley. Hooks him up, grabs him. Big ground zero. And that is not enough to get the win. Aaron Wesley thought he had him there with the ground zero. Zach Anderson with the double leg trying to open up that cut on the brow line of Aaron Wesley caused earlier by the flatliner. Zach has him up, spins him around. 
Looks like he could have been going for a German suplex, but Wesley not going to allow that to happen. Big back elbow by Anderson. And they find themselves in similar positions once again. Russian leg sweep and just laying in the shots to the chest and right under the chin. Big lion salt to Wesley. Goes for the cover. And a kick out. Now grabbing Wesley, but nobody home. Kicking the bad leg of Zach Anderson. Aaron Wesley hooks him up, looking for a second attempt at ground zero. Will he join Marco Rodriguez and Nikki Diamond off of that? He will. Aaron Wesley with the win. What a hard hitting affair. See the scars of battle on the eyes of Aaron Wesley as he becomes the third man to make it to the fatal four-way at make or break. And as we get into our next contest, it's time to determine the final competitor in the National Championship Fatal 4-Way. Two weeks time at TNT Make or Break. We've already seen Marco Rodriguez pick up the surprise win over Michael Young. We saw Nikki Diamond gut out a victory over Ted Cannon and we were just privy to Aaron Wesley fighting his ass off for that win over Zach Anderson. So now it's time to figure out who will be the final participant. Will it be Danny Horror or will it be Isaiah Oxley? Both incredibly tough competitors. Neither one would be a bad pick for sure. Danny Horror has been quite impressive in what we've seen of him. Just a few weeks ago, was in that six-way contest where he was the second last person eliminated. And a few weeks before that, had a barn burner against CC Chambers. So we know that he has the talent, just doesn't have the results thus far. And then there's a man described by some as cagey and unhinged. The man they call Oxley is here. Isaiah Oxley. Making his grand return to TNT. Looking mangy and unhinged. But will he be able to outlast Danny Horror and make it to the finals? Isaiah Oxley. Getting taken down by Danny Horror immediately. But fires back to his feet. Dodges the punch and... Lays the, no he doesn't. Tried to lay the smackdown with that DDT, but Danny Horror had the counter. We've seen three incredibly different matches in the in initial matchups of the National Championship Series. Will this one follow suit? Oxley lays in a punch. Springboard attack, but nobody home. Danny managed to run completely the opposite direction. Big pull in knee lift to the hand of Isaiah Oxley. And then a teardrop suplex as well. Grabbing Danny Hoare and shooting him over the top. Danny Hoare on the outside and Isaiah Oxley as well. Big run on the floor. No, this is not going to end well. Power bomb. You can see the exposed concrete in relation to the very small mats at ringside. Not much of a cushion. And just those chops to the chest of Isaiah Oxley. Big running 
Backbreaker there by Danny Hoare with the wrist lock. Isaiah runs in but gets caught back elbow. And this one is very, very scrappy thus far with Danny having almost the entire advantage. Oh no. Oxley's head hitting the concrete. That cannot be good for a man with a history of head injuries like Oxley. Medics positioned at ringside if referee James Jackson decides to call it off. Big arm breaker as well from Danny Horror. And a dragon screw. This one is ugly already for both men. Oxley may want to get it back into the ring. No, decides to nail him with a twist of hate instead. Oh, Oxley looking to get even. Oh, no. Tiger Driver 98 on the floor. My God. These two might not even make it to make or break. Good Lord. Picks him up. Falcon's arrow on the floor. And the elbow to the back of the head, his forehead bouncing off the concrete. We've said each match has had its own personal flavor, but this one is incredibly devastating. Good God. Isaiah Oxley getting worked over here by Danny Horror. Danny getting back in the ring mercifully, and Oxley looks like he may join him. Both men still standing, which I chalk up to miracles at this point. And more damage to the head of Oxley. And a kick in the stomach by Danny Horror. Went for a pumping forearm, but nobody home. Danny tried to lay in. Big forearm smash by Oxley. And another one. Bounds out of the corners, even clicks his heels together for the forearm and the bulldog to Isaiah Oxley. And a big headlock driver, Danny Hoare definitely felt that one. I think it busted him open as well. Elbow to the back. That is a lot of blood on the forehead of Danny Hoare. Two. Nearly got it done. All that blood spraying from the hairline of Danny Hoare. James Jackson may have to put on gloves to avoid cross-contamination. That is a dirty sight on the face of Danny. Oxley bounds in with the lariat off the rope spring attack from that side of the ring. Tosses him into the corner. And just laying in with the violence party. And a big elbow to the back of the head. Oxley performing incredibly brutally here. This just ain't right. Slice and dice from Isaiah Oxley. And Danny survives the slice and dice. Oxley picking him up, tossing him back out of the ring. That's a dangerous proposition. Danny fighting with everything he's got, but he's clearly lost a lot of blood. Inverted DDT on the floor as they make their way back to the concrete entranceway. But Danny thankfully throwing Oxley into the ring. Oxley went for the punch, but Danny countered it. Gut wrench suplex here by Horror. Kick in the stomach is countered by Oxley. Big smack right in the mouth from Oxley, and he sends Danny back over once again, but Danny punches. Danny springboard Euro uppercut from Horror. Fantastic body control there, but Oxley once again fighting off, and Danny can barely see at this point all the blood over his eyes. Big Rana from Oxley. 
Is that gonna seal the win? No! Hoare gets the shoulder up at the last possible second. But Oxley calling him up. Slice and no! Danny with the back elbow went for the kick, but nobody home. Big spinning back elbow there by Isaiah Oxley. Kick from Horror. The double axe handle and another one. Catches him lacking with the Listo kick and Isaiah's in the corner. Danny is firing up and the fans are with it. Oh my goodness, Ajuji Katami over the top rope. Trying to yank the arm out of socket. Especially on the rotator cuff. And Danny with the springboard back elbow as the crimson mask becomes almost face paint or war paint onto Danny Horror. Danny with the kick has him up. Stormbreaker by Horror. And that does not seal it. Isaiah Oxley gets the kick out. Isaiah Oxley managed to kick out of the Stormbreaker. Danny Hoare pulls him in once again for that ripcord back slam. Heading to the corner, could be looking for something big here. Looks like a super kick incoming to Isaiah Oxley. But he's not done, back to the same corner. Could be looking for the Chicago Destroyer. No, Oxley bucks him over. That would have surely put it down. Big common Geary from Oxley. Danny staggered. I rake from Oxley into the stranglehold on Danny Horror. The Bulldog choke and Horror has to tap. A desperation bulldog choke gets Isaiah Oxley the final spot. Definitely the most violent of all the qualifier matches, but we have our four way now for make or break. And as we get into our next contest, we have a match with very interesting implications for make or break. As Paradise lost Jason Paradise and Seth Dallas. We look to take on Owen Nichols and Aiden Flynn. In two weeks time, the currently scheduled matchup is Aiden Flynn versus Alex Clark for the TNT World's Championship. However, following a backstage altercation, this matchup was made. If Jason Paradise or Seth Dallas win this matchup, they are added to that world championship matchup, making it a triple threat. However, if Owen Nichols or Aiden Flynn get the victory, Aiden Flynn is allowed to pick the stipulation for his championship matchup. in an open contract situation. So a lot on the line in reference to the first pay-per-view for Tuesday Night Titans make or break. Live in two weeks from Niagara Falls, Canada. And out first is the global icon, Aiden Flynn. Aiden Flynn has been on a roll as of late and is definitely looking to keep it that way with a win here tonight and the opportunity to pick any stipulation he wants against Alex Clark in two weeks at make or break in his home country of Canada. 
though a little bit away from Manitoba where he is from. Aiden Flynn, a man who constantly seems to impress both in and out of the ring with his acumen. Being six foot five and 250 pounds, he can fly with the best of them. So his most devastating offense comes courtesy of his shiny golden black knee brace on his right leg. The self-professed king of MMA, Owen Nichols. Making his way down the aisle. Now looking to try and help his friend and MA cohort Aiden Flynn keep the one on one match at Maker Break while also doing some damage to Jason Paradise, who he had a backstage altercation with. Let's get into this one. This promises to be a cluster. One fall to a finish, and you already see Owen and Jason trying to pair off on one another, but what a cutter from Seth Dallas. Dragon screw to the leg of Aiden Flynn, but Owen does one to Seth as well. Jason Paradise, of course, many consider him to be the best bout machine in wrestling since 1997 has been wrestling non-stop against any and every one. Jason with a springboard headbutt. It's Owen and Seth. Many would consider that to be a dream match in the making. Snapmare by Paradise, but Aiden gets back up, eats a kick though. Paradise sending Dallas, or Owen sending Dallas to the outside as Paradise lays in the kick to Aiden. Goes for the cover on the number one contender and gets a two. Big boot scrape there by Jason Paradise. But Aiden has him up now and a fall away slam by the number one contender to the TNT World's Championship and a standing shooting star as well. Owen with an arm and leg bar on the outside but it is not false count anywhere. And a big springboard headbutt from Jason Paradise in the corner looking for something big here. Flying drop kick to the head of Aiden Flynn. Goes for the cover and nearly earned himself a spot in that world championship matchup. Will be interesting to see if Seth or Jason have any misgivings about that. Paradise driver from Jason and nearly got the three on Aiden there. As I was saying, it will be interesting to see if either Jason or Seth try and stop one another from making it to the triple threat. Aiden picking up Jason Paradise as Owen is sent into the steps. Big. Snake Eyes to Aiden Flynn. Laying in the boots. 
course, this is one of the last big dominoes to fall for make or break. We already know the participants in the National Championship Series. We know the contenders for the Tag Team Championships. We know a couple other matches, but the world title is one of the few bits that is still left to be determined. Aiden and Jason continuing to do battle as the steel steps come into play once again. Springboard Bulldog by Jason Paradise. Kick there by Aiden and tosses Paradise in the corner. Just lays in the punches. Jason with the kick to Aiden, but Aiden just back body drops him over. And Seth Dallas picking up the kendo stick and clattering Owen in the face with it. But keep your eyes on Aiden Flynn. Seth is down. Drop dead. Tiger Driver stacking Paradise high. And nearly saved his opportunity to choose the stipulation against Alex Clark as Owen takes down Seth Dallas. Aiden needs to stay on Jason, but he's doing too much trash talking right now. Jason got back up and Aiden baited him in, it would seem. Backbreaker on the knee brace. Absolutely devastating for Aiden Flynn's opponent. And now grabbing a steel chair. Goes for the shot. Jason manages to take him down. The headbutt and Flynn lands on the chair. That could do it. No, Flynn kicks out at one. Jason to the outside now, but Flynn not going to let that slide. Jason, though, may have just been baiting him in. Seth Dallas and, and Owen Nichols have spent the entirety of this matchup on the outside for the most part. It's both members of Paradise lost take down Owen and Aiden respectively, and Paradise has a bat, and he's going swinging like it's the World Series in Boston. Big Lariat absorbed as now Aiden and Jason are on the outside, and Owen and Seth are on the inside. Of course, if Seth were to pin Owen here, he would find himself in the world title match. Thrust kick to Owen. Into a shoulder roll neck breaker from Seth Dallas. Now Aiden nowhere near the ring. Go ahead, per forearm. And a DDT on the concrete. And Seth nearly found his way into a matchup for a world title. Seth placing the chair in the corner. Flynn taking down Jason. Busting open Owen Nichols is Seth Dallas. Big fisherman suplex onto Jason Paradise. Owen takes down Seth once again and a DDT on the floor to Aiden. Seth shot into the corner by Owen Nichols. What is he looking for here? Owen Nichols just laying in the north knees from the tree of woe position. Aiden throws Jason back in the rings. Owen looked for the guillotine choke. That would have been a win for Owen and Aiden. Surely thrust kick to Aiden Flynn. Snapmare by Jason Paradise, but Aiden gets back to his feet. Toss in the corner. Big Michinoku driver by Aiden Flynn, by Owen Nichols, excuse me, as Jason just face washes the bloody head of Aiden Flynn. Both men busted open. Flatliner from Seth Dallas, who grabs the chair now. And clatters Owen Nichols with it. Tiger driver from Flynn. And Dallas there to save his partner. And now both members of Paradise Lost have Aiden Flynn all to themselves. Owen nowhere to be found. 
Seth Dallas with the bullet kick and a second as well. Dallas goes for the cover. And Flynn kicks out of the bullet kick party. Oh, springboard attack, but Flynn managed to survive. Dragon Screw and both members of Paradise Lost are just assaulting the number one contender right now. Elwin Nichols back in. Dallas sent in for the ripcord knee strike. Two. Kick out by Dallas. Aiden caught Jason. The doctor is in and it's time to check your neck. Seth taken down. Owen sequestering him. Two. No, Jason survives. Canadian Destroyer to Owen Nichols. Aiden has the chair. Waiting for Jason to get to his feet. Chair shot to the face of, oh, of Jason Paradise. Now three men bloodied here. Bullet kick to Owen Nichols. Aiden just trying to lie in wait. Go ahead, perform is countered by Owen Nichols. So much happening right now as Aiden throws Jason into the corner. Goes for the cover. Seth may not be able to break it, but it doesn't matter. Big back body drop and a nip up from Seth Dallas into a standing shooter. Aiden with the drop dead. Tiger driver! And Owens got Seth sequestered. Aiden gets the win over Jason Paradise. And will get to pick the stipulation for his match with Alex Clark. And definitely not the result many here in Boston were hoping for. And as we get into our main event of the evening, we have got Kanosuke Takeshita versus Jamie Clark. Kanosuke Takeshita, of course, was very close to winning the Grand Championship on the first episode of TNT. Got it out a win over Michael Young and then again over Young and Chet Mulligan to get this opportunity. And now finds himself in a position to be the second ever grand champion. But it is definitely not going to come easily. As he looks across from Jamie Clark. Who wants to keep this championship so badly. of Jamie Clark making his way down the aisle as grand champion will this be the final time he enters as champion or will he be able to survive the onslaught that is Kanosuke Takeshita and the Jumbo Knee. Jamie 
Clark, of course, won this title in a six-way scramble match. This will be the first time he's had to defend it. But he has not been resting on his laurels. He has been going full steam ahead. Last week, picking up a hard-fought win over Tony Samuels. So will the timeless Jamie Clark be able to defeat the brutal Kanosuke Takeshita? That's what we are going to have to find out here tonight. So Kanosuke Takeshita in one corner. Jamie Clark looking ready for it in the other one. And Takeshita went for the jumbo knee. Jamie went for the 585. They both had the same idea, but neither man was able to connect with a kill shot as their first move. My God, Takeshita put Jamie on the top, but not able to get anything out of it. Went low and just laying in the shots to Jamie. Form in the face. 585 is countered by Takeshita. Springboards off the ropes with a forearm smash and this one is already starting off hot. Takeshita up to the top. Big elbow right to the jaw. Nothing short of devastating that landing was Jamie. With the snap jab throwing Takeshita into the corner. And good lord, look at these shots all over Takeshita. Dropping some bombs. And now just telling Takeshita what he thinks of him. Kame going, no, countered by Takeshita. Pulled back in, and these two are just already going shot for shot, hold for hold. Countered what looked to be a belly to belly by Jamie Clark. Northern Lights counter by Takeshita, but he was in the ropes. Up to the middle rope, Takeshita sits. Diving axe handle, but nobody home. Arm ringer into a lariat by Jamie. And drops the knee on the arm. Pulls him in for the CTE. Almost a variation on a 585, but not quite the normal power. Oh, Takeshita busted open into the backdrop driver. We know he had to get 11 stitches around his nose and forehead just two weeks ago after his match with Michael Young, and clearly they have not healed. Sherman in the corner to Takeshita. Good God. And Jamie not relenting on Takeshita. But Takeshita giving as little quarter as he asks for. Tiger hold into a butterfly suplex. Springboard moonsault, but Jamie got out of the way. Punch in the stomach by Takeshita. Jamie hooks him up. Another German to Kanosuke Takeshita. 585 takes his head off. But Jamie making sure to get him away from the ropes. Smart strategy. Could that be it already? This has been an absolute bullfight. But Takeshita kicked out. Jamie now looking to grab Takeshita. This is the move he beat Tony Samuels with last week. And Takeshita knows it, grabbing the ropes like his life depended on it. But now Jamie attacking the leg, going to make it harder and harder to hit. The jumbo knee now just tying him up in knots. 
And a penalty kick where the sun don't shine. Jamie just stomping away on Kanosuke Takeshita here. Will he manage to put him away via referee stoppage? Runs in for the lateral and gets a two count on Takeshita. James Jackson making sure to observe the shoulders. Kame no once again countered by Takeshita. Toss in the corner by Kanosuke. Big chop. But Jamie countered it and back in the corner he goes. Went for those bombs in the corner but nobody home. Went low. Springboard forearm once again from Kanosuke to Keshta. Kick in the head by Jamie though. Went for the lariat but got the jumbo knee. One, two. Jamie kicks out. Jamie took a little too long to prep for the lariat and got the jumbo knee as a receipt. The fans on their feet at attention. Jamie reverses the Irish whip. Takeshita shoots over. Ducks the line. Flying elbow from Kanosuke Takeshita feeding off the energy of the Massachusetts audience. Blue Thunder, bomb to Jamie. Could that put him away? Two, kick out by Clark at two. Kanosuke knows what he has to do. Jump, oh no, countered by Jamie. 580 countered. Jumbo elbow from Takeshita did not go for the knee. He must have thought Jamie would counter it. Chop to Jamie from Takeshita. Side headlock takeover. This has been nothing but bombs for the entire evening for these two. Jumbo no countered once again. Grabbed by Clark. Up on the shoulders, dropped on the top rope. And Jamie once again going back to the other leg this time. Once again trying to make it harder and harder and harder to nail the jumbo knee. That running boost psycho grabs him. Russian bottom from Jamie Clark. Two. Three, Jamie gets the dub and retains the championship. Not for lack of trying, but Takeshita could not foul Jamie Clark as we end our broadcast for the evening. Thank you for watching and thank you, Dean Morgan.